Hey guys, this is Eric back with another shape tutorial and I'm here to work with the Luma key a little bit more. This is just really for one specific person. He wanted to know how to cut out an iPod and um, I don't know what type of footage of the iPod you've got. I don't know if you can even do it this way. You might have to end up doing it the manual way and just rotoscoping it out, tracking it to your footage. But you can try a Luma key and I want to show you how to use a Luma key on this iPod picture here and you should be able to apply the same thing to your video. So, the first thing I'm going to do is apply a Luma key to my picture of my iPod. So I'll go to key, Luma key, okay? Attach this in here. Okay, now we have this Luma key attached. So, what I'm going to do is hit my A key to show me my alpha channel. and It'll be black and white. So, now you go into your low vowels and your high vowels and start adjusting. Try and make everything that you want to keep in your picture white and everything you want to get rid of black. So you don't want to make your edges too hard, you know, you want to... That looks like a pretty good Luma key right there. So uh, now what I want to do is I'm going to add attach an over node to this Luma key. So layer, over, then I'm going to find my background. I've got a picture of an inside of an Apple store here. And I'm going to pop it into my other side of my Overnode. Okay, now I'm still on my Alpha channel. You won't see much. So I'm going to go back to my view and hit the C key to bring the color back in. Now, you're, nothing's going on. Why not? Well, you've got the pre-multiply. So go down into your Overnode and hit the pre-multiply button. Boom. Now we have this great Luma key, but as you can see, it's keyed out everything white, and we're going to take care of that. And we can take care of that with a roto shape. <clears throat> so, first, let me try to add a light wrap to this. So I'm going to select my Luma key, and I'm going to go to, now I have a light wrap macro that I'm going to use. So I'm going to right click, branch, look at my alpha. And there is my light wrap. Now, if you don't have a light wrap plug-in, I'm just doing this for ease of use. You can make your own light wrap, which is no problem. If you need me to, I can make a separate video showing you how to make a light wrap, light wrap from scratch. And I can show you, have a video showing you how to make a blur from scratch. Because I use these uh, macros a lot, these plugins that I've got, just to save time. But a lot of people don't have them. And if you'd like me to make a video going through showing you how to make a light wrap and a glow from scratch, then I'll be more than happy to do that. But for now, I'm just going to use the uh, light wrap that I got from High End 2D, and we will go from there. So now I have this light wrap, so I can go down in here to my controls now, foreground edge control, and you can do your overall gain, as you can see. You can adjust how much light wrap you actually are going to have. Okay. And there's overall edge blur, which will blur your edges. You want to do that a little bit. And then there's overall gain. You just have to go in here and it's your brightness. You just have to go in here and adjust. You know, how predominant do you want the brightness light wrap to be on your key? And then we got the overall blur. We can blur it overall. And then we can go in and even have our background control, but we're, I'm not going to mess with that. So I have this little generic light wrap here we're going to add into our scene here in a minute. So let me go back to my overnode and go back to my color. Now we have this, but we got to fill this in, and we're going to do that with a roto shape. So I'm going to go to Image, and I'm going to select Roto Shape, and I'm going to work in context by loading up my Overnode and loading the parameters of my roto shape in. And I'm going to go in and make a box around my iPod like this. Making sure I get everything that's not filled in. Okay, now when I look at my roto shape node, here's what we got. So how are we going to get this inside of our key? Well, no problem. I'm going to go to my Luma key, and I'm going to insert, and let's go to my layer. Now you can use an over. I'm just going to use an under because it helps me keep things straight. This roto shape is going under my iPod, so I'm going to use an under. It just helps me keep things straight in my mind. Under and over is the same thing, just the input and outputs are reversed. So I'm going to hit under and I'm going to take this under and I'm going to insert it between my Luma key and my over like that right there 
And then I'm going to take this roto shape and plug it in right here to my um, second input of my under tab. Now, as you can see, that laid it on top of my iPod. I don't want that. Since it's an under tab, whatever's going to be on the bottom needs to be in the first input. Just like with an over tab, whatever's going to be on the top needs to be in the first input. So let me switch the inputs around like that right there. Now, when I go back, you can see that this shape, which is right here, here's the points for it, is laid underneath my iPod. So I can, I can disconnect this, and you can see that it's gone, and I connect it back. Now all you have to do is track that roto shape to your object. That's all you'd have to do. So now we want to add in our light wrap. Let's bring our light wrap down here. I want to click an over node to my light wrap. And I'm going to plop my completed over node comp into this light wrap over node. And that gives us a small, tiny light wrap around. And you can go in and um, adjust your light wrap. As you can see, the more I bring it up, the more of the light wraps around it. We want a little light wrap. We don't want a whole lot, but we want enough to where you can just barely tell like there's a little light ring. You know, and there's a lot of touching up that can be done on this video. I'm just trying to show you the basics. Now, if you wanted to, you could go in and you can add a gamma node if you want. Just to kind of make things look a little darker. Let's see what we can do with it here. Let's add a gamma. As you can see, when I bring that gamma node down, it makes my hand, the shadows and stuff, a little bit darker. Now, we'd want to go in and clear up these edges, clean up these edges and stuff. But that's basically how you pull a Luma key on something. And if you can't get it with the Luma key, man, you're just going to have to roto shape it out, track it by hand, or, or use the tracker node, whatever it takes. Sometimes you just get footage that you just can't be helped. It's just going to take some time. I've even had to rotoscope grass before if you can imagine yes grass ladies and gentlemen so there are going to be times that it's going to be necessary so i hope you've learned something hope you got something out of this um if you have any questions get a hold of me be more than happy to answer them and uh this is eric for final cut studio school saying we'll see you next time